You like dwarves? Do you like dwarves with a mean streak? Dwarves on fire? You filthy Uruk. Do you dream of a race of stunties sworn to being assholes and or fearsome enough instead of those goody two-shoes stoics? I have the answer for you in this week's STL review. Artisan Guild is once again on the table and available for you to pick up this month's reward. And trust me, it is worth the price. These are all amazing models. The Dumlock Flame Seekers set is worth it for anyone who wants some crazy cool dwarves to add to their collection. And it comes with a pretty epic centerpiece model. Up first, we're going to be looking at the troops. As one would expect, we've got another six different models split evenly by gender with helmeted versions. So we got a, quite the potential here uh, of models, which is always nice to see. Uh, I definitely think some of these helmeted ones will be used for some chaos dwarves from old school Warhammer. <laughs> the best part about these though has to be the variety in the weapons. You're getting great weapons and single-handed weapons and even interesting weapons like whips. The picks and the hooked swords that they, car they carry are very nice. They all have the same effect and style that really blends itself quite well without looking awkward in the way that sometimes magical effects or like bright lava type weapons or obsidian or those types of like weird elemental effects tend to look for some of these STL prints. Uh, it's a lot easier to make them look different in a, in a CGI render than it is in reality. But here, Artisan Guild knocks it out of the park. I do have one small issue, though, with these sculpts. Uh, some of these troops uh, on the helmeted version, horn itself has been placed directly into the shoulder pad, uh, where they should have been, say, like flush against or knocking up against each other. They are instead merged into one piece. Uh, just a small oversight, and it just doesn't look organic. And yeah. It's not terrible. It could easily be fixed by cracking the tusk off of the helmet, which isn't a bad idea to add some character. But overall, they're nicely, nicely sculpted. You won't be disappointed by the hair or the beards or any of the details, really. But now let's talk about the beasts. These are called Calcatars. I love these models. It's so hard to find a good model for a D&D a &D Gorgon. And these fit the bill to the T. These will paint up almost in any style absolutely perfect. I'll definitely be grabbing a couple of these. And there will be a forthcoming video on this channel where we're going to use one of these uh, that unfortunately misprinted for a bit of terrain. All three of these sculpts, though, are excellent. They all capture that le lethal grace and ferocity while oozing individual character. But wait, there's more. Dwarf centaurs. Dwarf centaurs. These lads are brilliant. They combine some of the best elements of the previous parts of this set into an absolutely amazing piece. The bodies of the bulls and the upper halves of the dwarves are, quite frankly, perfectly fitted to each other here. It looks organic, it looks smooth, and the sculpting work here is just impeccable. Together, they create this dynamic and evocative, furious, monstrous cavalry that's just mm, excellent. 
I do have a few small complaints. For one, I wish that the heads were modular in this case and that there was a armor, a helmeted or an armored variant for the dwarf top half of this. Uh, it's a minor complaint, really, and it would probably be easily fixed with a bit of green stuff and some work. As normal, we have two heroes this month, a fighter and a mage. So let's start with our fighter. Holy shit. This guy is an absolute unit. The muscle work, the blades on the beard ornamentation, the boots, the chain flail. It's a chain flail on an axe. This is probably one of the most insane weapons I've seen rendered on a miniature and that still looked like within the theme of it. The, the posing and the face just sell the idea that, yeah, this guy is crazy enough to wield this insane weapon that's going to cut him just as much as it's going to cut you. And it prints like a dream, even on my older Epax X1. Just perfect. I, I may even print a few more of these guys off. Uh, give them some of the weapons from the troops. Maybe some, make some dual weapon wielders. Just to create some more like dwarf berserker heroes. That's how much I enjoy this sculpt. I can't wait to paint him up. The rock here, which I do feel the need to address works it adds to the dynamism of the sculpt and it's not a crutch this is going to be important because we need to talk about the arcanist this guy rocks but loki confuses me the armor is a lot like the rest of the set excellent here this minimalistic armor design really sets them apart and the extra details on his helmet, having those blades forward and that dragon skull on it, it just works and makes him stand out as like a hero leader type figure. The hammer is nice, uh, but it's the tablets that confuse me. If you look at the way it's rendered, it becomes a bit odd. He's got on the right shoulder three like dragon bone spine pieces that cover it. And then on the lower most one, he has these tablets that are suspended up over his left shoulder to the center of his back and it just looks really weird for an adhesion method and there's something like a strap on there and some extra plates and stuff but it just it's odd into it's kind of illogical i i kind of feel like it needed to be another half of these tablets like a or like a more visible brace Maybe if it was more worked into these dragon bone bits on the back. And yet there's one other issue which is unfortunate given everything else, but why is he on a rock? I get that it's dramatic and he's striking downwards, but what is it? add it's just a little in the pursuit of something interest i think this this part is a step too far it's I, I think a lot of it comes down to it's the extreme distance between the two le the legs of this dwarf it very much feels like he's coming down from a very high incline down to whatever's at the base to hit his target. I'd almost prefer if this one was on foot without the rock. 
The dragon skull now was nice, though. Very nice. I should note, uh, the... He does look better when he's mounted on the back of the winged bull. Which, we need to talk about this. The winged bull. This is a beast. And I love it. I do. As a mount or as a standalone monster, it's an impressive piece. It really is. The rings and the ears and the nose really are these nice touches to the much smaller Calcatars and add that bull aesthetic to it very nicely, while the flaming hooves, which are lacking from the Calcatars, add this really fun sense of menace and overt fire that you don't really see within the rest of the set. It's kind of pulled back on the fire aspect, but here it's on not necessarily a prominent display, but enough display to tell you what this thing is. This fire is this careful restraint to create a balance within the piece. The amount of clear flames that are sculpted to everything is just limited and pulled back where one might be more inclined to lean in very heavily to make the weapons like this. Uh, add it here and there. Sometimes less is more. Once again, though, we got the same foot on rock scenario that the Arcanist has had too. And it works here for the sake of dynamic movement. It presents the bull's head, chest, and horns, and the underside of the wings as the front of this model that really projects a sense of power and builds a sense of a threat to it. It's going to be a treat to paint. So what are my thoughts overall? This is a must-buy set for anyone looking for interesting dwarves or wanting to get their hands on some very fun, menacing, elemental beasts. These sculpts obviously are going to get and a solid 9 out of 10, with just a few things holding them back in certain places. The theming on all these models is absolutely perfect. It's a balance between these brutal weapons, the interplay between flesh being exposed and metal armor, and pulling away from that traditional heavily armored dwarf archetype. Solid 10 out of 10. These print very well. The pre-supports are good. I have to give this entire thing a solid A. And I think I may even use this as a metric to judge future sets because it is encapsulating the artistic progression of the Artisan Guild sets and is a marked improvement over some of their older dwarves, which are good, but not necessarily up to this level. This one's going to get a highly recommended from me. And as they did point out in their, their Patreon release, you could scale some of these uh, dwarves up to giant size and have a very interesting, like, fire giant. I may have to do that. All right, yeah, I'm going to have to go do that. <laughs> so with that, we're going to bring this video, this review to a close. Remember to hit that like and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed these. There are more coming. We're getting back on the, I guess, uh, wagon, one might say, for these STL reviews. And make sure you turn on the notifications so you don't miss when the next one comes out. I try to be a little bit more consistent here. And hey, if you enjoyed these that much, uh, leave a comment down below about what you want me to review next.